What's up guys? So I have an update on the uh, case warranty uh, series of videos, I guess. If you have not seen the first one, I have a slimline trapper here and unfortunately in the closed position, the very tip of that blade sticks out, which is just a little bit dangerous. Obviously shouldn't uh, be that way. Uh, a lot of people had commented and talked about, you know, fixing this at home. The little kicker here where the Ricasso is, obviously when the, the blade is closed, that is pushed up against the uh, back of the knife so obviously if you shave some of that down it might allow uh, probably will allow that uh, blade to go in a little bit further but that's not really the point you know of this I, I kind of just want to see what a uh, case warranty um, experience is like and of course share with you guys so last time uh, I read you the front of this uh, paper that I printed on the warranty but I forgot to read the back so I'm gonna go ahead and continue with that first it says warranty replacements if your knife meets our warranty guidelines and cannot be repaired we may at our discretion offer to replace it with a current manufactured knife that most closely matches the one that you sent uh, if you decide to accept the replacement knife options uh, your old knife cannot be returned okay a knife with sentimental or collectible value will be returned and not replaced as noted so they're basically saying is that you know, when you fill out the paperwork, there's a little section that asks if you have a sentimental attachment to your knife. Like this is your grandfather's knife and there's only one and it'll never be replaced or whatever. If you say it's sentimental and they cannot fix it, okay, at least for free, and you don't want a replacement, then that means they're just going to send it back to you how it was. All right. If it's not sentimental, they're saying if they uh, can't fix it, they'll probably just replace it with whatever current production version they have of that knife, whatever's uh, very similar to it. All right, uh, non-warranty repairs says if your knife can uh, be repaired and is not covered by our warranty, uh, you'll be notified of any non-warranty charges by mail. If your knife cannot be repaired and does not meet our warranty guidelines, it will be returned as is. Some knives cannot be repaired depending on the availability of parts. All right, so I just wanted to read the rest of that to you so you guys understand that uh, before you go ahead and check off the sentimental part. Um, so yeah, now, since the last video, I've been checking my email every single day and there's been no response at all from Case. And I'm thinking like, oh, you know, I know there's delays because everything that's going on and stuff. And it even said, you know, expect some delays. But, you know, a few days went by. And I'm like, there's got to be something. Let me check my junk mail. And what do you know? There it is in the junk mail. So I actually wrote the date on top. They got back to me on October 30th. But unfortunately, it went right to my junk mail. But I wanted to read this response that they sent back. It says, hello, Jeff. Thank you for taking the time to complete the warranty slash repair request form and for submitting photos of your knife. We are happy to advise you that your knife was evaluated and appears it will be covered under the case limited lifetime warranty. All right. So they got back to me very quickly and said, yeah, yeah, it should, definitely shouldn't be like that. Um, that should be covered under warranty. No problem. Go ahead and send it in. And then it goes on to say how to uh, send the knife back. Uh, which is really simple they just want to make sure it's nice and secure uh they did um send an email form which was kind of pre-filled out with my information and of course a reference number so once they receive the package they open up to see the knife they can use the reference number to see what the case was and, and read the original you know complaint or problem whatever and of course they're going to go from there so pretty simple stuff um you know you request the form you fill it out online you send them your three pictures of what's going on and uh, then, of course, they'll get it back to you and let you know whether it's something they feel they're going to charge you for or if it's something they feel like is covered under the warranty as a manufacturer's defect. So this, you know, apparently is a manufacturer's defect, as we knew. And they're agreeing to that. And they're saying, go ahead and ship it back. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. They are requesting that I ship it back with um, a tracking uh, number, of course, and to insure it for the proper value. So that's it, just uh, an update on this knife. We're going to pack this up and ship this out today. And uh, when it gets returned back, we'll open it together and see what they did. So that's all. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you happen to have any experience, of course, with uh, case, um, you know, warranty department, if you had to send things in, love to hear a short version of your story down below. Let everyone know, you know, what the problem was and what they did for you. Just kind of curious so people can get more feedback than just, just this video. Also, let me know down in the comment section if you uh, EDC a case knife. I have uh, over the years. I've enjoyed case knives ever since I first got into knives. And there's a lot of different slip joint patterns out there and, and some different um, traditional style knives from a variety of different companies. 
uh, but I just always always love case knives and I still collect them. I, I very much focus specifically on case trappers, uh, but I still enjoy the older knives and I'm very excited to see what they can do with this uh, slimline trapper. So I'd like to be able to, to carry it and use it again. So anyway, that's all. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.